Hi, this is Ken Rolla with Fresh and Alive, and I'm here today with my friend uh, Valery Uvarov. Is that the right way to pronounce your name, Valery? Right, you are doing perfect. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> I actually had somebody correct me. I was doing an interview with somebody, and I was telling them about you, and I pronounced your name that way, and they said, no, no, it's Valerie. <laughs> no, Valerie. Actually, in Russian, it's Valerie. Yeah. So anyway, welcome. Um, I met uh, Valery at the Bosnian Pyramid Conference a couple years ago, and uh, he was one of the very few people on this planet that bl can blow my mind um, continually. And so I was having really interesting conversations with him and just fascinated. Uh, and it's, it's, rare, it's a rare privilege for me to bump into people that are doing the kinds of things that he's doing and have done, and uh, just the knowledge and experience and um, viewpoint that he has. So I, I said, God, I got to interview this guy for my blog. And uh, 2018 turned out to be a very, very busy year. And so I didn't get around to it. So here we are in 2019. And I'm very pleased to um, welcome you to the program, Valeri. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. So first of all, uh, let's, let's do a little shameless plugging because um, you know, I want to get that right at the beginning because a lot of people, uh, you know, they may not listen. This is probably this could go for an hour and a half or so. And so I want to get um, your first of all, your website out right at the get go. Um, your website is new pyramids dot store. Right. And um, you have some really interesting products there, which we'll talk about in a little bit. One being the uh, Wands of Horus and um, several other things, including um, Egyptian, ancient Egyptian uh, sole inserts for your shoes, some very interesting stuff. And uh, you very graciously gave me a set of the insoles, which I've worn, and uh, very interesting effects, uh, very interesting effects on that. So we'll talk about those. Uh, but basically, it's based on ancient Egyptian technology, correct? All right. I read your book Pyramids, by the way, and it's, man, for anybody who's interested in pyramids and ancient Egyptian history, it is uh, just very, very fascinating because not only does it give a lot of new esoteric information and new interpretations of things, but also it ties so many different things together from a galactic perspective on down to human anatomy, and uh, it's really, really uh, brilliant treatise. So we're going to talk a little bit about that as well. And by the way, today, uh, as we're recording this, this is the Martin Luther King holiday here in the United States. So happy MLK Day. Um, I actually had the privilege of working and living with Coretta Scott King and the King family when she was ill um, back in 2005, I believe it was, before she died. Um, and so I, I always observe this holiday. So my staff have today off, <laughs> but I don't. Um, so uh, first of all, tell us a little bit about your background and you know, what you did before you became a pyramid scientist and how, how you got led into working with pyramid technology. You know, like all other people, on the one hand, I was studying in, in uh, an institute and I was studying as a mathematician. And at the same time, uh, from my childhood, I was very, very deeply, let's say, involved in music. I like Beatles, and then uh, I learned a lot about American music, and I was so fascinated that I did music. I played guitar for a pretty long time, and I did it professionally. And until a moment, it was in 1989, when suddenly something happened inside of me, uh, and I started to see something that I never saw before. But the interesting is that uh, a few years before, uh, just, you know, jogging, being on the run in the forest, not so far from the place where I lived, I have encountered a person. And we uh, then made another five kilometers together. And it was, uh, he was so nice guy, he, uh, we made a friends. And he managed to talk with me so that I became a vegetarian. 
So today I can tell you that I'm vegetarian already uh, 45 years. Mm. So, and right after two or three years, I stopped to eat meat. It's, it's maybe it sounds strange, but it's reality. I started to see something different. I saw that our world has a real internal, deeply, you know, in, you know, situated problem. And I, uh, I noticed, I felt necessity to make a choice. What to do? Whether I'm gonna play guitar as I did before, or I change my life so that I, I would try to do my best and correct, or at least to take part in correction of those deviations from normal life which I saw at that moment. So happened that one of my friends invited me to UFO conference. And that was the moment when everything was changed in my life. That was a very interesting conference, uh, full with uh, scientists. It was not the conference for ordinary people, that was the conference, conference for the scientists who were investigating the topic on a professional scientific level. I was so amazed. So it, so I come back from that conference. I put my guitar away and I became a professional ufologist. <laughs> so maybe it sounds a little bit strange, but uh, what I did before, I mean, I played music I was studying as a mathematician. And before uh, that, uh, I also was studying as a painter. And all these approaches, all these possibilities to see the world helped me to understand what stands behind that phenomenon, which we uh, call UFOs. Uh, I have investigated UFOs not by books. I did it, let's say, a life. I was traveling. I was visiting areas. I was talking with the people. Um, and uh, this is what actually I said a uh, few times in my life. I was lucky to have encounter, close encounter with it is. And it happened in a very far remote area in Siberia during my following expedition. And there I had a chance, like a normal human being, just to ask a question. What actually you are doing here? I, I asked them. That was the just like human, like people like we are, not like with this big eyes or so, no, just normal like we are, the same, size, let's say, energetically, they were different. And uh, in a very calm, very natural form, I asked them, what are you doing here? What is your interest? And they looked and said, if you want to understand our interests, you should learn prehistory of your civilization. Mm. Then you will understand our interests. And for me, that was the key moment. From that moment, I started to investigate ancient history in all possible manners. So, and now I'm here, <laughs> sitting before computer talking to you. <laughs> so I learned really a lot. And um, what I understood from that first meeting from with it is. And it was, as I said, the key moment in my life. I understood that uh, UFO has nothing to do with esoteric stuff. It has nothing to do with mystics, with the fantasies. This is reality. Reality which has its own prehistory history which is very closely connected with the history of our civilization, history of our solar system, 
history of our galaxy, where the history of our solar system played a very special, on the one hand, decisive role. That was the impulse which I have got from them. And this is the reason later on I was investigating ancient Egypt pyramids and their effect that uh, very unusual ancient Egyptian tools from pure scientific basis. And it helped a lot. I know um, one of the things that um, resonated with me immediately when we first met, <laughs> we, I don't even remember what we were talking about, but I asked you something and you, you paused and you said, well, let's be honest. And then yes. you told me about your ET encounter. And I've had ET encounters myself as well. I encountered reptilians, uh, but they were, you know, not the typical negative ones that so many people talk about. Um, but um, what was interesting to me is when you actually have these encounters, you, you know, you get information and a perspective that you can't fake. You really can't fake. And so you had a lot of really interesting perspectives on what you were told and on your experience that because of my experiences I knew were true. So um, tell us a little bit about that, that encounter. I believe you said you were taken up on a ship and shown your past lives. No, past lives, it was a little bit different. Uh, you know, first of all, when they meet you, and I, and I have got this knowledge and experience within the years, it's just now I can, sit here and talk to you in a short manner uh, just giving the main most important information without prehistory what is actually what i would like to convey to people to you that it is uh, much more developed than we can imagine and they can read your mind they do it quickly they can read your prehistory, not only this life, all your previous lives. And then they, let's say, they analyze you, your perspectives. And then while they are talking to you, they do few very important technological tricks. First of all, the meeting with them, this is the moment when they make kind of a copy of your hologram. Because any human being, and you know about it, they have, we have a hologram. Energetical uh, body, let's go. Because energetical body is a very complicated structure. It's not only seven energetical bodies, which has a projection in endocrine system of human being and blah, blah, blah. Everything is much more complicated. But this uh, energetical system contain all information about your past, present, and some future. So they make a copy of it, and then they need to get a key. Because in the whole universe, there are no two equal people. We are all different. And to read your information, let's say, they need a special key. To get this key, they need what we call the way of your thinking. How you react on a hot information. So for this, they are giving you some information which makes you nervous. For example, it can be like a warning that you are living wrong, you are making mistakes your civilization goes the wrong way and in the nearest future all your civilization and you are gonna have uh, much problems and very negative experience and usually your brain immediately starts to react this is what they need exactly how you react they make this record and then they can easily get access to you they can see easily and immediately 
in which area and what way you can be very helpful for evolution, not only of yourself, but also evolution of solar system, even galaxy. And then they make a following step. Usually people do not feel it. People do not realize it. But it is downloading enormous quantity of information, like on a hard disk, like on SSD, like ring, and all information immediately there. The game they play is very honest. The information which you have can be activated in your brains only in case if you start thinking about it. If you start thinking, for example, about UFOs, the information about UFOs starts to open. If you're thinking about pyramids or ancient Egyptian civilization, this information starts to open. Everything is very, very natural and very, very honest, my exactly. friend. So, so this is the way how it started, how I came uh, to the point where I'm standing now. And I tell you that uh, I have so many interesting information to share with you, to share with people in America. So uh, I feel a little bit happy. And at the same time, I feel uh, I need to open this knowledge. Mm. I need to give it to people because um, this is kind of responsibility for the future of our civilization. So this information is for humanity, not for me. What you're saying um, is very, very similar to my experience um, in that that's, that's kind of the process that happened with me. I had a lot of tests in the dream state in particular to analyze my character to see how I would react to things in different situations, as you mentioned, to kind of read me and get an understanding of my character. <clears throat> and then I was also shown me in other lifetimes and other places and times, and some of them not human as well, which was very interesting, but that's exactly my, had been my experience. I had a lot of tests, I got a lot of downloads, uh, so that I could do what I'm doing now to help humanity. So it's interesting that you're saying this. It, it's like this. It's, it's a normal life. Uh, now I understand that this uh, outer world, external, extraterrestrial world, and we are, we are living like one living organism. So, and um, they also very clearly understand that information which we get should be used in a very proper manner. Uh, we should develop ourselves, but this development must not be quick. It should be very portioned. It should be um, very, you know, how to sp spread in time uh, without stresses, without uh, a negative influence on subconsciousness. And at the same time, it's really important that people knew the truth. Because if information, if the information which you have is wrong information, that means that you're going to build the building of um, understanding on a very wrong basis. So if this building will be very weak, it, will, it, it can very easily be destroyed. So foundation of the building of the future civilization must stand on a very truthful information. What actually happened with our civilization within the last 15,000 years? But this is a key moment, I tell you, because there was a period, pretty long period in the history of our galaxy, where and when our civilization played a very important decisive role so and what we experience now all that problems this is the trace this is the echo this is a result of that events and this is on the other hand it's a chance for us 
we can use what happens now for very positive uh, results, for very positive uh, things, but we need to know what happens. So this is the reason why you and me, we are investigating, we are sharing, and thanks that there are people who are interested and that kind of information. So like this, we are creating a conscious, very important informational field, like um, like informational, um, how to say, power. It's um, egregor, you know this, this word, egregor. For, for example, Christianity has its own egregor, like uh, Islam is it, its own egregor. And this is kind of a, power which then stimulates people to go on in investigation, to go on in self-perfection. Without this energy, without this power, we can do nothing, my friend. And all that tools which ancient use have been created exactly for this reason, to empower internal energy of a human being, this strong wish to change this world for better, to improve your health. And what is most important, what I have found in all that ancient text, they knew the technology of consciously controlled reincarnation. And that is, this is the key moment, my friend. This is the key moment, because this opens unbelievable possibilities for humanity. This world can be changed completely within the following 15 years. No more. 15 years. And we will be living in a different civilization. I agree. Um, I've seen, I've worked with, as you have too, I've worked with technologies that could completely clean up this planet and heal things uh, very, very quickly. So I know those solutions exist. Um, you mentioned this pivotal moment in human history that changed everything. Are you talking about the destruction of the planet Maldek and our solar system? This is, um, in, in the history of our galaxy and our solar system, that events, as I said, they played a decisive role. This destruction of Maldek, actually Sumerian name Tiamat, the ecosystem of Mars was destroyed. And that was the last moment of a very long period, which in ancient texts is named War of the Gods. And important is that according to that text, Martian civilization started this war in our galaxy. Martian and Tiamat, these two civilizations, they have been so successful in fighting against all galaxy, so successful that in a historical and human memory, Mars became the god of war. External civilization, uh, not only one, all of them, they had to put their knowledge, their power, their capabilities together so that the, at the last moment and the critical moment of this war to successfully fight against Martian civilization and how it happened. I'm just now writing a part of the book and also I'm, I'm making a short video about it. It's interesting how they did it. Very unusual. For just a moment for people who are wondering what the heck we're talking about. Um, now there are, there are actually secret space program whistleblowers who are coming forth in the United States and other places talking about the real history of, of Earth and our solar system. And the story is that there is a planet, there was a, a large planet in our solar system uh, in the vicinity of where Mars is now uh, called Tiamat or Maldek and Mars was its moon. And so they both had civilizations on them, human civilizations, 
and they got into a war and Mars wound up destroying Maldek, which became our asteroid belt. Is that your understanding of the story? According to ancient texts, these two planets, they were living together and working as a two parts of a civilization of a solar system. Mars was the central civilization. Maldek, Tiamat, was the one very technically developed. So what I'd like to point out, they are not dead. Now we should keep in mind that um, those events which are taking place now in our solar system, especially how extraterrestrial civilization are treating us, why it's so specific. Those who lived on Mars and Tiamat, they are not fully died. They moved on the planet behind the sun. In our solar system, according to ancient Egyptian texts, we have another planet, very big one, and I was trying to find the name of this planet in Sumerian text, and I found it. This planet is called Marduk. Right at the last phase, last moment of that very long-lasted 2,000 years war, Marduk was moved in our solar system, and then Marduk was moved behind the sun, and there, on the same orbit as the planet Earth, it stands quite opposite to us, and they are there. But let's get back to the moment we have been started with, with you, and um, I didn't explain shortly what happened, how this War of the God was actually made. According to uh, destiny and history of our solar system. It so happened naturally. Each 33 million years, solar system goes or flies through so-called meteoritic floor. And this floor killed many forms of life during this long history of the planet Earth. For example, 65 million years ago, this meteoritic floor killed dinosaurs. And that civilizations, Mars, Maldek, and some others, they built a complex in our solar system and on our planet Earth too, which defend our solar system against this meteorite and asteroid. So, and that moment when the War of the God was at the critical phase also was a period when our solar system again started to move through the meteoritic flow. And that external civilization managed to manipulate, to intervene the normal activity of this installation. Let's say they switch it off. And when we move through the meteoritic floor and huge, huge planetoids and asteroids were flying through the solar system, installation didn't help. And these huge asteroids, they destroyed Maldek. Maldek exploded and pieces of Maldek, they not only formed the asteroid belts, these pieces attacked Mars. Mars has received three very powerful asteroid impacts so that they broke through the crust and affected the rotation of the core of the planet. Mars immediately lost its magnetic field. Whole solar system have been brought into chaos and this chaos, according to ancient texts, lasted more than 10,000 years. And for these 10,000 years, somebody was trying to reorganize solar system, to bring the planet in a certain order, replacing orbits, replacing the locations of some planets. And according to Mayan text, the last event which took place in our solar system was appearance of the Venus. According to my text 3113 BC, Venus appeared on the orbit around the Sun before there was no Venus. And that was the moment when the solar system again was brought 
into a certain balance and now we are here in this situation yeah that's very interesting um i you know it's interesting these things that you told me earlier about this and also i believe you said that the moon which is a construct i was told by these reptilians that the moon is a constructed device that it's not a natural satellite that it was brought here you told me this and um, yeah it's uh, according it to here to help balance the orbit of earth yes, right right and because uh, 13671 years ago huge planetoid hit the planet earth and planet earth lost its orbit and started to move away fly away from the sun somebody moved here the biggest piece of tiamat they somehow made it as we see it now moon this is the big piece of tiamat which they which they cut somehow made a ball and moved into the magnetic field of the planet earth increased the mass of the earth and planet earth have been stopped where we are now this is the reason why before we had the year cycle of 360 days according to all ancient calendars now we have 360 five days and these five days this is exactly the distance how far we flew away from the sun and this causes a critical changes of climate mm -hmm. on the planet earth so yes moon appeared not so long ago and it's a pretty new object it's not millions of years no it's very new object and uh, venus also is very new object and as long as moon and venus appeared very very recently this is the reason why all ancient civilization mayan civilization chinese all developed civilization they started to recalculate they built a special complexes watching the moon watching the venus calculating their rhythms calculating their cycles because ancient priests knew that all this planet rotating around the sun are affecting not only our human body uh, they are affecting our energetical system and for example this is the reason why venus this is the planet which is symbolized by goddess venus goddess of love sexual love why venus has so strong connection to sexual sexual side because venus is rotating on the second orbit but second chakra is a sexual chakra exactly so it's like the it's like the um, second chakra of the solar system exactly so now uh, just by very simple example i showed you what kind of a very serious problems those extraterrestrials had to decide and also those priests who were living on the planet earth not only to recalculate but also balance solar system so that our bodies our energetical system would stay alive and be capable for self-development because ecosystem of a solar system have been fully destroyed you know um i i actually have a video on youtube uh called the physics of consciousness and i get into how we're, we're basically part of this galactic matter energy system and at various levels of scale you've got these scalar wave antennas our bodies are fractal scalar wave antennas planets and suns are like portals for this energy but basically what you're saying makes sense for somebody who kind of can't see the big picture of this this may sound like a bunch of nonsense but the planets for example being like chakras in the body it makes absolute sense when you look sure. at the solar system as a big um, antenna, so to speak, um, that at the insides of these planets and in the inside of our sun, you've got these uh, portals or black holes or whatever sure. you want to call them that are sure, relaying sure. this energy from the rest of the cosmos into this system at a solar system level. 
and then each planet has its planetary energetics and then that you know we're part of that system as well our bodies as above so below we have the same kind of energetic structure within us with these you know the body's full of these black holes this is exactly the key moment why not only egyptians priests all of them they were very carefully watching what's going on with the planets because any planet like for example planet earth has a core this core is kind of a source of life energy energy which stimulates any living creature on the planet earth this is the key energy and this is also container of everything we need not only for our self-perfection also core of the planet and the planet itself has all information we need about our galaxy about the universe everything is here so what we need we need once to understand the construction of the universe construction of the planet and then we need to find a connection plug in to this source of energy but planet earth this is our mother planet earth created our bodies so we are tuned on the planet earth but as long as not so long ago planet earth have been moved away from the sun and all the reasons have been broken they needed to create a tools to somehow fine-tune their bodies to the planet earth just you know realizing this uh, events which took place not so long ago so and anything now we see in the hands of ancient egyptian priests whether it's going to be the wands of horus or in souls or strange corona anything this is the tools for fine tuning for um for one reason to synchronize energetical system of a human being with the energetical system of the planet earth chakra by chakra energetical body by energetical body and if we do it everything will be changed in our life yeah everything things and we are kings we are gods so let's talk about these tools uh, and how we can use them because you know i i talk about big concepts like this but then i also always um present to people okay this is all great but what can we do with it and that's where your expertise is really very valuable because you've actually built these devices and you have done things with them with people and see what the results are so let's talk first before we get into pyramids that's a large uh subject but let's talk about the wands of horus and these insoles and the things that you've developed how they work and what they can do for people first of all what make me or made me fascinated that these instruments are pretty simple to use it's not like something special we need to to sit somewhere in a special position no we just the wands of horus you can see them in the hands of any statues of any pharaohs they have these tools what is it what the role these tools are playing and i needed more than 20 years to understand how they work and to try to explain for example to you or to somebody else what is the meaning of this tool and i tell you that it seems to me i have found the words right words i have found the um the vision how you can imagine it in ancient times and even today our present doctors the most honest from them they know that each human being each of us has a so-called internal doctor who knows everything about you about the state of your health and this internal doctor is called endocrine system in reality we are constructed very very complicated what it means shortly your body it's a milliard by milliard by milliard cells and each cell has its own vibration 
These cells form the organs. Organs form the conglomerates of organs. It forms your body. So if you need to analyze, correctly analyze your uh, state of health, you need to get contact to each of your cell and analyze any weak electric, electrochemical, and any processes which are taking place in each of your cells. It's easy to understand. On the level of our technology, it's impossible. Completely impossible. Even just imagine if you put a contact to each of your cell, what kind of a computer or software you need to analyze. But we are sitting here, and while we are talking, we are flying through solar system, right? <laughs> and each second, the electromagnetic field of the galaxy is changed. It affects our sun. Sun explodes. A charged particles flies to the planet Earth, they affecting us, and in each cell everything is changed each second. It's impossible to scan, analyze by the equipment and scientific approaches which we have now. Impossible. But ancient priests, they did it perfect. They did it so clever. So how they did it? First of all, According to the principle we have started to talk with you, the principle of anthropic similarity, when we say that the human body is constructed exactly like solar system, exactly the same construction of the planet Earth. Let's take into account the human body and the planet Earth. We have the physical body, planet have the physical body. We have seven energetical bodies, the planet Earth have energetical bodies. We have energetical channels, planet Earth. Everything is the same, completely. So, ancient text says, we need to synchronize our body with the energetical body of the planet Earth, one thing. Then, according to that principle, we have been starting to talk. In the Korean system, our internal doctors knows what we need now. Hypothalamus, hypophysis, pituitary system, this central organ of our endocrine system is controlling any processes which are taking place in our body, in any cell. And then this information goes through central nervous system to hypothalamus and hypophysis. This system is analyzing information and then sends back signals for corrections of any deviations from norm. And all the signals are weak electric and electromagnetic signals. All ancient text says in the middle of palm, we have projection of hypothalamus and hypophysis, which we call third eye. And here, remember, they also made a drawing of the eye. When we take these wands in the hands, we immediately bring to the quartz crystal our warmth our electricity and the crystal inside get polarized plus and minus crystal starts to vibrate it's so-called piezoelectric effect and what's going on then these signals which are sent by hypothalamus pituitary system these weak electromagnetic signals go into resonance with the quartz and quartz empowers these signals it affects our body so that our of a human being starts to vibrate with vibration dictated by hypothalamus and hypophysis. So it means by this very simple way, we are retransmitting the signal. Our aura through peripheral energetical nervous system starts to heal our body. On one hand, this is a very simple idea, but this is an absolutely genius idea. Quartz inside of the wand, the core of the planet, has 72% of the quartz. When our planet is vibrating, the energetical system of the planet Earth is vibrating, body is vibrating because all these energetical influences of a cosmic rays, rotation of the planet, all this is affecting the quartz in the core, which is generating piezoelectric effect. 
and the aura of the planet Earth is communicating, is interacting with this piezoelectric effect. So through the quartz in the core and the quartz in the wand, resonance effect. We are transmitting the vibration of the energetical bodies of the planet Earth onto our body. And each energetical body of our physical body starts to vibrate with the same vibration of the planet Earth bodies. Genius idea. So just to get into resonance with the vibration of energetical system of the planet Earth, the ancient use quartz. Quartz because, as I told you, we have 72% of the quartz in the core, but the quartz has the same type of the crystal lattice as the water, which looks like a pyramid, tetrahedral mm. system. Water and the quartz are working in resonance together, go into resonance with the quartz inside. Through the quartz inside, it affects the biological water in our body, and all this starts to work as one system. And like this, we are getting into the contact with the energetical system of the planet Earth. Genius. Genius. Mm -hmm. Nothing to compare. I totally get what you're saying because, you know, as you know, I make devices as well. And quartz has a very specific frequency. And so when you're holding these wands of Horus, as you mentioned, you're resonating with the frequency of the quartz. It's bringing you into alignment with the frequency of the earth and the quartz, yeah, yeah, raising yeah. your frequency, basically. It's, it's a very simple way, but it's perfect. On the, on the other hand, one cylinder made of copper, another one made of zinc. This is actually halvanic pair. So it means when we take them between these two cylinders, it appears difference of potential. On one hand, we can say, okay, but what is the meaning? What stands behind it? Time, the speed of time stands behind it. This is the reason why all ancient technologies were built around one and the same idea. All that instruments were constructed for one reason, to create difference of potentials between right and left side of a human body. Between Ka and Ba in ancient Egyptian tradition, Yin in Yang, because from Eastern tradition, we know that in Yang, it's a male and female beginning, plus and minus, whatever, that's great, but one thing is lost. Yin in Yang, it's to counter flaws of time. So if you bring these flaws of time into harmony and you keep this harmony for two weeks, your inner biological time will be conservated. When you gave me those insoles and I put them in my shoes, I was tired for about 10 days and I was having cleanse reactions from it. You have different types of uh, wands and the, the insoles. What are the different purposes of the different wands? All depends on a level of your energetical system state. If you have a weak energetical system, you have a problems with blood pressure, you need to start to develop your system very smoothly, step by step, not like hop. So these instruments are solving the problems which you will never be able to solve with the help of chemistry. Because chemistry, it's okay, sometimes we need it. I'm not against medicine, but what ancient deed, we need to combine with the present medicine. We need to put it together and then results will be perfect for self-perfection of any human being. There is one very important condition. We need, critically need, to bring our nervous system into stable, calm state. An Egyptian text says, very clearly says, calm down your nervous system, the eye of God will come to you. Without it, no chance, but our life is so stressful. And people who are living in stress, they are not guilty. We're just living in a system. We have got this system as a legacy from previous times. 
And now we need to find the way how to solve these problems. And ancient knowledge has a key ideas. And the ones of Horus, especially with a big or large grain quartz, small grain or fine grain quartz, has unbelievably calming effect on the nervous system. This instrument is perfect, for example, for teachers. I have many letters and emails from teachers working in the schools with kids they were so grateful saying to me, Valerie, you can't imagine that now working with the wands, my internal oven is very calm. Before, when I saw how kids are behaving, it made me sometimes crazy, but I had to keep myself together. I'm always in distress, but now after two months of using the wands, I feel that inside I'm absolutely calm. That was the lady. I remember that email very, very clearly because it affected me very much. She said, now I do not react so deep and so negative as I did before. And even when my kids are behaving like a crazy, I feel love to them. I do not feel anymore that hatred or something like this. Thank you, she said, because I do not use any medicine. I do nothing. I just use the ones of horrors at home in the evening and I feel fine. How long do you hold these wands and, and how do you use them? The wands you need to use in a proper time, in a proper place. When you want to affect or heal your kidney or pancreas or whatever, each of these organs has two hours of activity of energetical channels through 24 hour period. So if you take a table and you want to correct the situation with your liver, you take this two hours. The best way you go for a walk or you open the window. If you are living somewhere outside, it's perfect. You can go to the tree with the wands and it has deep effect, very, very corrective effect. So best way is to make a right choice. Just take into account the condition of your body on what you're gonna have an influence. And then the best way is to use the wands in the open air. Then your energetical system opens up immediately, like three, four, five minutes, and your aura grows very, very wide, and it starts to interact with the energetical field of the earth. What is important, intensity of observation of energy from surroundings increases up to 40 percent this is very important result it gives a lot to human being just keep the want like all other people in this world i'm also so busy that i use wands at night i go to bed i take them and sleep with them i have my insoles on my legs in the socks and i can tell you honestly absolutely honestly i had this experience many times if i put my wands away and my insoles away for one month or even three weeks in three weeks i feel oh my gosh that i am 65 i feel it very very well but when i take the wands when i take my insoles next night i sleep very well in the morning i get up very early and i feel myself as i am 25 years old. And I tell you, thanks to ancient Egyptian priests. Thank you that you left a records information in the form acceptable, understandable, reachable for us so that we can read it and we can create this tool and use it today. Now you mentioned the, uh, the insoles and um... Talk about those. I, I know they're composed of copper and layers of copper and silver. Um, how do they work and what kinds of benefits can people get from them? Oh, insoles. Also, I'm amazed. If you look on the soul from Chinese system, that this is the remote control of your body. Everything is here. 
what you need to do is just to put in soles with copper and zinc inserts inside so that they create a different of potentials between a certain zone affecting the organ. This insoles not only affect the speed of energy movement through the channels, they create plus and minus on two ends of energetical channel which is moving through the human body. Blood circulation system starts to get activated. Blood moves easier, faster. In souls, the ones of Horus are the tools which I would present to my best friends. Mm. Because I know that this is working so great that all my best friends, they are worthy to have it. Mm -hmm. They need to know about it. This is the reason why you can see these tools in the hands of any statue of ancient Egyptian priests or pharaohs. Why? because that was the instrument of a very high cosmic value. People today still do not understand it, by many reasons. Mostly not because they are not able, people just busy. Our friends, they just busy. They have families, they have offices, work and whatever, politics, anything. What I can do is just to investigate and to tell you, listen, Ken, I tell you, this is really great stuff. Believe me, use it and you will tell me many, many times, Valerie, great things. This is the way, how I see it. So let's talk about pyramids since that's one of the things that you're famous for and you've done a lot of work with them. Uh, let's talk about you know what they are, how they work, and also how your Wands of Horus and the insoles work with this pyramid technology. In ancient Egypt, anything they used or created have been produced for very special reasons. Nothing just to show up status that I am a king. No, these people was very far away from that. They were using instruments for main reason, just to correct the balance of time, field of time inside of their bodies. And the difference between the wands of Horus is not only in size. For sure, a pyramid is a huge instrument. And you have to go into the pyramid. And pyramid has very unusual effect. This is the reason why I wrote the whole book about it. But this book is just the beginning. It's a preliminary step just to prepare your consciousness, your perception for conversation on a quite new level. In this book, I started to talk on the scientific basis, showing that the pyramids, for example, have a very beneficial effect on the human health, not only on our nervous system. We can fight against cancer with almost 100% success. Sure, on one hand, it depends on the level of the cancer, but pyramid does something that no other chemical remedy can do. No. I myself, studying the pyramids and the pyramid effect, I came to scientific conclusion that pyramid is a tool which will help humanity, our science, medicine, to make in the nearest future a very important life-changing step. And for this we put together pyramids and present medicine. I myself, on one hand, on one level, I did it already. But at the same time, being the person who is investigating the pyramids, I can tell you, I came to a special moment when I understood that there is another science, another truth about the pyramid, about human health, about human body, this is new way of thinking. It's absolutely new approach, which we can start to learn very actively. And we got already some practical results. For me, this conversation with you, it's not exchange of fantasies, right. exchange of plans, uh, what we're gonna do, no. This is much more. For one thing, you've done it, and we'll talk about your specific projects. And also, both you and I know, because we were on a team of engineers and scientists and 
researchers studying the Bosnian pyramids with Sam Osman Agic, that you know there are people with stage four cancer going into the Bosnian pyramids and coming out with no cancer. So it's not like you're just making this stuff up or we're talking fantasy. It's happening now and you've it's happening. been participating in that happening. But on the other hand, medical scientists have a right, and I understand them when they ask, they ask me many times, listen, Valerie, this esoteric approach, it's fun, it's great, but we would like to touch something material. Can you write something for us using our language, using the way of understanding as we have? This is the reason why, by the way, I wrote the Wants of Horus book using this scientific language, and the general public read it um, sometimes saying, listen, Valerie, it's too much, you know, scientific. But I, ex I am trying to explain. My friends, doctors, asked me, Valerie, can you do it honestly for us? And I did it. The Pyramid book is written much more simple for people, but I'm coming to a moment of understanding and wish to write some more, some additional important piece of information using this type of scientific language, putting together not only results of scientific investigation of the pyramids, the wands, insults which we did, also I'm planning to put all this together with religion aspect, because investigating Bible Gospels, I understood that these books contain also a lot of information about technologies. But these technologies are described by a very special way, by a very special manner and language, which we now, or today, we call it religious way of thinking, religious way of talking. But I did the step beyond it. And this is the reason why now I'm ready to start talking about this technology described in this religious text, and I'm sure when we put it together, we will give our civilization, we will give to our kids tools that, for a yeah, very cool. active step. If forward. I can interrupt you for just a moment, that's one thing. I downloaded your book uh, on pyramids that you're talking about, and it's really, really fascinating. It, it's Is it on your uh, pyramid? newpyramids.store website. Can yes, yes. Right yeah, you can download PDF file from them. Yeah, I highly recommend it because it ties so many different things together. It, it ties together physics and biology and spirituality, science, yeah, religion, science. all kinds of stuff. In that book, you will find a lot of scientific protocols of investigation of the pyramid effect on living and non-living origin. And this is the, very important, but at the same time, I want to tell you, this is preliminary step. In the nearest future, we're going to make much more, much more, my friend. And pyramids, again, I'd like to point out, this is the tool for our daily life. No mystics, no esoterics. This is instrument which we can use, successfully use. First of all, we need to build it in a proper way. We can use pyramids like home office pyramid, which we can use at home in the, our office, in the room of our kids, and they are very effective. They have a very deep effect on our blood. And not only, if people will download the book and read it, they will find a lot of scientific reports there. But big pyramid, where we can go inside, this is absolutely different story. First of all, we need to build the pyramids from white quartz. It should be proper material. We need to find the right place, like we did in Russia. We started to build the big complex of pyramids. Today, we have built 13 pyramids on the area of 40 hectares. But now we started already to build airport there, close to, yeah. Last wow. year, yeah, we, yeah, we built our private airport there, and we're gonna build the city city of the pyramids and we already owned 525 hectares of land just for building the city of the pyramids with kindergartens with school business centers healing centers spiritual centers 
and many things there will be for people for free. People can go there with families, swim in the sacred lakes where water have been exposed, not only in pyramid. Pyramids are around. Go on my website. Man, New I'm moving there. That, yeah, <laughs> and you, you will, by the way, just one year ago, if you didn't see this page, the face number seven, there I showed and uh, gave the story like UFO appeared there just exactly when we finished the face number seven and we put a special four pyramid at the corner of this 40 hectares land. It was four very special pyramids. Next moment, we saw like UFO booms appeared over one pyramid. Then it was hanging over the pyramid like two minutes. And then it was a jump, 540 meters less than the second. Shing there, wow. two minutes. Shing there, two minutes. Shing there, two minutes. And then disappeared. It means UFO made a GPS mark. Oh, you know what? That reminds me of something these reptilians told me. They said that um, structures like pyramids were often used by extraterrestrials when they're doing time travel and dimension travel. Yes, yes. Because it helps exactly. them locate themselves in time and space. Yes, because it's critically important. Critically. And what this UFO did, I understood it immediately. They made a special marks on the map of universe that now you have here kind of a pyramidal shaped huge antenna so you can you know <laughs> it's a gps marker yeah great great now you also mentioned to me um that you know you've got these four pyramids on the corners of this square very large very large lot and then at the center you've got a larger pyramid yes and overall that makes one giant energetic pyramid correct yeah. yes so, and I, I've seen, you know, pictures and video of the interior of, I think the big one in the middle. Tell us about, um, to the degree you feel comfortable with, tell us about the, what's inside of these things and what kinds of um, phenomena and experiences you've had. I know Sam Osmanagish told me a few things uh, when he visited and I think you guys slept inside the big pyramid, didn't you? No, this one, no. When he visited, that pyramid have been still under construction. But this central pyramid, it's very unusual. It stands on a 12 facet foundation, which is four meters high. Any energetical flaw which comes from the core of the planet has kind of a negative component, always. So to because cut- the geology? No, it's normal. When I say we have a negative component, it means a negative component for our form of life for our bodies on this particular level of development. Okay. On the next level of development, what we are talking about now will not be negative. But today, it's uh, better to cut off or to neutralize this type of vibration. So for this reason, we created such a thing like a 12 facet foundation. Then under the pyramid complex, we build very big energetical source. It's a device on the square of 40 hectares. On the depth of six meters, there is huge, huge device. What is the reason? First of all, we need to gather all this energy which is around this complex and to move, to concentrate this energy vortex in the central pyramid. By this way, we are creating kind of a portal in the central pyramid. This central pyramid has 25 resonators inside in the form of the pyramid. We did it for a very special reason, not only for meditation, because people can go and meditate there, no problem. We did it for a very specific technical and scientific purposes. We made some experiments and we noticed that we can 
transfer the capacity, the healing effect from medicine onto water. So programming water homeopathically, it's, so to speak. We can call it programming, but this little bit different mechanism, because uh, any chemicals or medicine, it has kind of a crystal lattice with its own vibration and capacities, whether you can use these chemicals and you know all these negative effects which we can encounter, all we transmit, we bring this vibration onto water by natural way. And then you drink this water without any negative effects. Mm, okay. But healing effect is absolutely the same. And we noticed many years ago, we did experiment with insulin. We put the insulin under the water and then in prison nature, we were transmitting this vibration. And then when you drink the water, it has almost the same effect without insulin. It was interesting. And also what we got, the insulin which we have been using was out of date. It was not active mm -hmm. for already a few months. When we put it in the pyramid for 12 days and then took it out and analyzed, insulin restored its effectiveness fully. And what is interesting, now I tell you the most interesting moment. This insulin had immune stimulating effect mm. interesting interesting this is more than interesting i tell you we have been so fascinated so this is the reason why we have decided to build and we already spent 25 million dollars on this complex already because we know we're gonna have absolutely unbelievable results yeah. Have you, have you worked any with monatomic elements with these types of solutions? Not yet. Not yet. Uh, that's an area, it sounds like we're working in some similar areas in different ways. I'm, I'm actually working on um, what I call Ormus homeopathics, which are basically you put a monatomic element like gold mm -hmm. into water, mm -hmm. and then you can, I know. you can program it with frequency mm -hmm. and it will radiate those frequencies outward and have amazing results. Uh, we actually have a, a radiation formula on our website, an anti-radiation that will neutralize radioactivity in the body mm -hmm. using that principle. And I'm sure you could do that with pyramids. This is the reason why we have built the pyramids with a very complicated construction. Because inside this pyramid-shaped resonators, they were built precisely with a special system, technical devices inside, so that we could then transmit these vibrations from the medicine onto water. It's a very specific stuff. How long does it hold its properties? Is it permanent or does it lose it after a while? Uh, interesting is that uh, after the effect, after the pyramid effect, it has, it keeps or saves these capacities for years. Wow. For years. That's amazing. That is. There's a lot of, there. you know, there are more and more energetically charged supplements and things yeah. coming out on the market, but most of them don't hold their frequencies very long. I tell you, even we had a wonderful results with a red wine, for example. We I just explained about that in your book. Yeah, tell people about that. Oh, it's interesting, I tell you. Three years ago, we made an experiment. We bought in France very cheap one euro bottle wine. <laughs> very cheap we brought it to the pyramid and exposed for two weeks and then invited the specialist from that factory just to test and show what's gonna with the wine you know i would i would give a lot to see how you would react on the eyes of this french you know they were just tested the wine and they were looking and said what you did with this wine <laughs> it's impossible. This is cheap wine, but it has absolutely amazing capacities. How, what did you do? We have been smiling. We have been laughing. But interesting is that this wine, first of all, it has effect. You can drink one liter, two liter with, not, with no any negative effects. Your head will be clear. Wow. 
yeah, it, this is 100% in any case it works like this. But then what is important? It has, first of all, immune stimulating effect. We have registered. And what is interesting also, it has a very positive effect on blood circulation system. Good. Wow. Now I know what kind of red wine and what for we're going to drink and what for it was created in ancient times. So I tell you, for clever people, it could be perfect business. Oh, you know, well, that reminds me too. A few years ago, I was I met <clears> a <throat> Buddhist monk. He was actually the abbot of a Buddhist monastery in Los Angeles. And he actually, I took some classes with him. And one of the things he taught me was how to do exactly what you're talking about. You could do it with any drink, but he, he would do it with wine. He got some really cheap wine and he would do this meditation over it for two minutes and it would radically change the taste yeah. the properties of the wine and make it taste good. And he actually did it as a parlor trick. We were at a hotel, we were at a conference. So we were in the hotel and we were in the, uh, the restaurant of the uh, hotel and we were right next to the bar and there were some people drinking some wine and they, he did it to their wine. It was really funny. Um, you know, in like two minutes, he, he took these people who didn't know them and just zapped their wine with his meditation and altered the wine and made it taste better. And of course, it blew them away. You know, it was. Yeah, the taste is different. Effect is different. Wine changes its capacities critically. So that's the, that's the reason why I can tell you take the just normal wine, you expose in the pyramid. First of all, you have kind of a remedy, healing effect very deep positive healing effect well that's great news for wine drinkers because i get yeah. i get people asking me about well can't i just drink some wine every now and it's like well you know the alcohol is not that great for you but th this is really good news for wine drinkers and the yes. french i guess <laughs> but up till today i can't understand why why uh wine dealers they do not use this effect because it could bring the wine on an absolutely new level uh, of uh, selling effects because well, for anybody if, listening, there's a new go, industry right there. If I would go to the shop and I saw there real wine bottles exposed in the, to, into the pyramid, you understand, I would yeah. buy only this type of wine, only, nothing else. That's amazing. Yeah. So, so tell us a little bit more about the, the inside of your, your large pyramid and what kinds of things you've experienced in there. So, first of all, um, I, I'd like to explain that uh, this complex of pyramid is still not ready for full 100% work, still not ready because we need to complete a special connection because this energetical system I was talking about a few minutes ago, it's there, but it should be connected by a very special way. It's not completed, not finished. When we will finish it, then we're going to install inside of the pyramid special mirrors special system which will allow us will help us to affect the field of time and here i'm i'm sure that we will be able to open the real portal but we're not gonna do it like uh, running we we're gonna do it very you know uh, carefully step by step uh, I would say on a scientific basis. We need to record anything we did, anything we do, anything we gonna do in the future, and then all that effects will be recorded, analyzed, and so on and so on. So this, for us, it's a serious work. Mm. And again, I'd like to tell you and explain, we are far from mystic, we are far from... let esoteric, let's say, uh, in, the, in the general way of thinking. No, we prefer experiments which we can repeat, repeatable experiments, uh, but everything is based on the scientific, ancient scientific texts mm -hmm. describing the effects. Uh, so now we are creating the tool to be able to receive this uh, result and uh, again at last uh, i'd like to tell you that uh, up till today up till now i am investigating the pyramids let and me ask you the what, what's the difference between um 
or in function or uh, the, the difference between a, a regular smooth sided pyramid and a ziggurat, the stepped pyramids. There is a difference to form the preliminary understanding. What is the difference? I would divide these pyramids into two main parts, smooth sided and stepped pyramids. Smooth sided pyramids, we are working inside of the pyramid. Step sided, we are working on top of the pyramid. Step ziggurats should be built on a special places. It should be the place of power. It should be a very strong energetical beam. And when you put this pyramid on top of this beam, this pyramid becomes kind of a prolongation of this beam, giving to vibration of this beam a special capacities tuned on the human body. This step ziggurats has so strong effect on the human energetical system and energetical body like nothing else in this universe. But in nowadays, problem is that uh, most part of the pyramids which you can find in Yucatan they were built in the later times when the knowledge have been lost. And in whole Yucatan, you can find a couple of pyramids built on the proper place. Mm. So we cannot take them in account discussing or explaining the effect. But working with all possible information I had access to, I can tell you, step zikurats you are working on, they are prolongation of the energetical beam. Small pyramids, we are working inside. The beam goes into the pyramid, then it reflects many times, creating inside a special three focal zones with three different capacities, three different type of effects. They didn't mix the pyramid. They did this one or this one. Always keep in mind, my friend, always. Unfortunately, most part of the pyramids in Egypt, in Mayan civilization, were built at the time when the knowledge have been lost. This is the reason why we had to build new pyramids in Tomsk. Just for speaking of that, yeah, speaking of that, uh, one of the things that I want to do, as you know, is bring you here to Florida and build a pyramid, show people how to build pyramids properly. And First of all, we need to have a land. Mm -hmm. Then we, we take geological, morphological maps and so on. Then we check energy. We find the proper place. Better if this place has energetical connections to different areas of America, so that this pyramid actually would affect not only this area, a big part of America. And then there, we're going to build a pyramid according to the purpose. What would you like to build it for? If you want to stimulate the consciousness, it's going to be one type of construction. If you're going to heal people from cancer, a little bit different type of construction. All depends on how you're going to use it. Well, interestingly enough, I live on the largest ley line in the United States. It comes down from Mount Shasta in California across the U.S. right through where I live. I would like to build a pyramid to um, protect Florida against hurricanes and severe weather because, as you know, there's a lot of weather engineering going on and these storms, mm -hmm. there are always telltale signs you can see in these hurricanes that hit Florida of scalar interferometry being used with them. So I'd like to help protect Florida against the hurricanes. Well, it, it, it's one of the reasons why in ancient times this pyramid have been built for. They were trying to control and manipulate seismic activity. Mm -hmm. As you know, um, Russian pyramid scientist uh, Alexander Golod mm -hmm. uh, showed exactly that. You know, he had access to a lot of advanced technology because he was in the Russian military, and he showed that exactly that that it reduces seismic activity, mm -hmm. activity yeah. massively in large areas. Today in Russia, it's not a secret. All people know it because we did many many films about it, where professional geologists and experimenters who was experimenting with the pyramids, they confessed that they noticed this effect, that pyramid has anti-seismic effect. For sure, pyramid cannot, you know, shut down the seismic activity 100%. No, it's uh, because reasons are cosmic. They are much more serious. But to damp it down seriously, it is possible. So this what is kinds of pyramids can people build themselves um, 
you know, where they won't get into trouble, is, is there, there are certain things that they can do with pyramid technology themselves? You know, I know one thing, the more pyramids will be built, the more positive effect for the whole country will be, for sure. People can get a lot of positive effects, a lot, health issues, you know, uh, and many, many others, also business issues, a lot. That's the reason why I tell you, let's make a plan what we're going to do, what we're going to have, what we would like to have. And then we can create a construction like an ancient times, ancient Egyptian architects did. This is the reason why we cannot find two equal pyramids, because mm -hmm. they have been built for different people, for different purposes. That's why they have a different proportions and other things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd like to I'd like to demonstrate to people how they can build a pyramid uh, with materials that we can get here, you know, uh, as opposed to giant monolithic stone slabs or whatever. Um, Not only, no. Uh, in the nearest uh, maybe month, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna make a new page, web page on my website about the pyramid, new pyramid store, where I show how my friend in Moscow he built the pyramid for himself, and it was interesting interesting effect well i know it's getting late there and i don't want to keep you all night so um it, you know let me once again um remind people your website is newpyramids.store and you can download valeri's book pyramids there as a pdf for free it's a amazing amazing book and it'll tie a lot of threads together um you know we've just touched on the service so i'll definitely be interviewing interviewing you again and get into more details on some of the practical things that we can do with these and, and other things. Um, but is there anything else that you would like to include? Well, first of all, let's say like this, it, this is the first meeting, first uh, you know, workshop or seminar like this. Let's consider be first and not last. Let's continue. So, and step to. by step, we can uh, we can give to people, we can bring to people a lot of interesting data. I will prepare some videos, maybe some photos, some additional information on my website about the construction processes, so people can see and make a decision what they want. And uh, I think most part of the people will be able to offer this possibility and to build the pyramids in their own garden. It's not so difficult. And on the other hand, it's not so expensive. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate your wisdom and knowledge and um, brilliance. And we'll definitely be talking again. Uh, so I'll let you go. And again, thank you so much. You're welcome, my friend. All righty. And, and I want to say hello to all people in America. Remember, Russia loves you very much. You know, I'm loving you very much. Likewise, you know that I, I'm I've, I've been amazed in my travels overseas. I haven't been to Russia yet, but I I've been to countries, for example, like France, where I thought that they wouldn't be terribly warm to Americans because of our politics and our history. But it's I'm very uplifted from the standpoint that everywhere I go, people I think because of the internet and YouTube and things like that, people are not believing in the lies that our governments have told us about each other now. So people are much more kind and friendly. I mean, just amazingly so everywhere I travel. So, um, you know, here in the United States, it, it's always, you know, been popular from our governments and the powers that be to make the Russians be the, the root of all evil with whether it's <laughs> elections or whatever. But I, people are seeing through that more and more thanks to the internet. So likewise, you know, um, I want people to know that here in the United States, you know, most people aren't falling for that stupidity anymore. And mm -hmm. um, certainly the Russian people I know here in the United States and I've met overseas are amazing, amazing people like people everywhere. Yeah, yeah. So big hug from me to all of you to America. Remember, we are together. And when we are together, we will win. Exactly. All right. Well, thank you so much. Welcome, my friends, and hope to see you soon again. Yeah. <laughs>